throne of God above I have a strong and perfect plea A great high priest whose name is love Whoever lives and pleads for me My name is graven on his head My name is written on his heart I know that while in heaven he stands No tongue can bid me thence depart No tongue can bid me thence depart Satan tempts me to despair And tells me of the guilt within Upward I look and see him there Who made an end of all my sin Because the sinless Savior died My sinful soul is counted free For God the just is satisfied Look on him and pardon me. To look on him and pardon me. Behold him there, the risen land. My perfect spotless righteousness. The great unchangeable I am. With himself I cannot die My soul is purchased by his blood My life is hid with Christ on high With Christ my Savior and my God Because the sinless Savior died My sinful soul is counted free For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me To look on him and pardon me Hello and thanks for joining us. We appreciate your interest and trust that you're staying safe and healthy these days. I'd like to pray. Father in heaven, that you would care for us and be involved with us is almost too good to be true. We need you. The world needs you. Canada needs you. As the COVID pandemic continues, we ask for strength to be vigilant. We pray for those who have been infected that you would make them well, and that you would use our public health officials to offer us sound guidance. We long for the day when the pandemic will be over. As important as good health is, we realize we have other needs too, to know you, to be in good relations with those around us, to fulfill our duties and responsibilities, to be good citizens. We ask that you would help us in these areas. We also ask that you would sustain us energize us and comfort us. When we're moody, fill us with your joy. And when we're tempted to retreat from others, teach us how to interdepend with one another. These are challenging times indeed, yet we say, our God reigns. Now, Father, would you let the ministry of your word stimulate us and encourage us? In Jesus' name, amen. Our meditation today is called The Two Ways, and it's taken from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. What have you learned during the pandemic? If you're like me, you may have started paying attention to gates, other people's gates, gates made of wood or of steel, gates that are high or low, gates that are wide and others not so much. I don't think I was even aware of people's gates before the pandemic. Whenever I'd visit a home, I'd simply come to the front door, no longer. All summer and fall, we've been doing deck visits, 
backyard visits. The rule of thumb was, hey, when you come over, bring your favorite beverage and come around to the backyard and you can just use the gate. I guess you could say we're becoming gate literate. As Jesus brought his Sermon on the Mount to a conclusion, he pressed people for a decision. He wanted his readers to make up their minds. And so he laid out their options with a series of twos. And the first of these twos is about the two ways. And he mentions two gates. There are two ways, <clears throat> life paths, set out before every human being. And Jesus described these using various figures. He spoke of gates and roads and destinations and groups. And depending on one's choice, the outcome differs. Things can end in disaster or exceptionally well. Let me read Matthew 7, 13 and 14 to you from the NIV. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. The notion of two ways is both ancient and modern. The prophet Jeremiah spoke about it. This is what the Lord says. See, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death, Jeremiah 21. Implied is, you choose. The psalmist in Psalm 1 spoke of two ways. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Implied is, choose wisely. Can you think of any modern day references to two ways? You may have heard of the American poet Robert Frost, and he wrote a poem called The Road Not Taken. You probably read it, learned it in school. Let me read part of it to you. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So when Jesus spoke of two ways, he was in good company. He was in the company of prophets and poets. So how does Jesus' teaching on the two ways unfold? I'd like to do a couple of things here. First, I'd like to summarize Jesus' teaching, and then I'd like to talk about the significance of his teaching. First, he pictures two gates, chapter or verse 13. One narrow, another wide. Then he connects these two gates to two roadways in verses 13 and 14. The narrow gate with its narrow road and the wide gate with its broad road. Thirdly, he adds a different destination to each gate. Again, verses 13 and 14. The wide gate with its broad road leads to destruction, and the narrow gate with its narrow road leads to life. And finally, he embellishes the gates with two different sized groups in verses 13 and 14. The wide gate with its broad road leading to destruction has many travelers, while the narrow gate with its narrow road leading to life has only a few travelers on it. It's kind of a collage of images. What do you make of all these pictures? What does Jesus' portrait mean? What's with different gates and roads and off-ramps to different destinations and reports of heavy and light traffic? What's going on here? First, when Jesus announced that the kingdom of God was near, he meant for people to enter into it. And the only way that would happen was if they came through him because he was the gatekeeper of the kingdom. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14. Sounds kind of narrow, doesn't it? Not a lot of leeway. Some things are like that. For instance, you can only burn gasoline in your lawnmower. It's the rule. Just try putting Dr. Pepper in your gas tank and see what happens. As a married man, I can only be intimate with my wife. It's the rule. 
Drink machines in the theater lobby only take Canadian currency. That's how it works. If you want to share in the kingdom of God, the person who can get us in is Jesus, the gatekeeper of the kingdom. Secondly, there are other options. Jesus called them the broad road. In his day, first century Palestine, uh, that would have been Judaism. But that was rendered obsolete by the perfect sacrifice of Jesus. Just read the book of Hebrews in the New Testament with all its emphasis on the better thanness of Jesus. In the wider Roman Empire, there were a multitude of gods to choose from. But far as the New Testament writers were concerned, none of them were a match for the wonderful grace of Jesus. And they expressed his superiority with the title King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Revelation 19, which was a kind of evangelistic slogan in their day, exalting the supremacy of the Savior Jesus. Here's a question for you. Does it matter what I believe? Does it matter which path I follow in life? Some prefer Jesus, but others Mohammed or Buddha. According to the mood of the 21st century, it's not a big deal. After all, don't all roads, if sincerely followed, lead to God? Jesus didn't think so. He taught that different roads, narrow or broad, could land us in different places. Seven times in Matthew, Jesus spoke of a place of punishment in the next life. It was Gehenna, or sometimes rendered hell. At the end of time, there would be a final judgment, and depending on the life path we chose, we could land there, which is why Jesus bids us follow him on the narrow path. It leads to life versus destruction. As a young Christian, our youth group used to sing a song, and some of the lyrics went like this. Now he walks beside me day by day, ever watching o'er me lest I stray, helping me to find the narrow way. He's everything to me. It was a wise reminder that the path I was on, the narrow way, would take me in a to a good place. It would take me to a saving place. Finally, Jesus described what traffic was like on these paths. On the Jesus way, he said, it's light. Everywhere else, it's heavy. The Jesus path is narrow. That is, it's difficult, even demanding. Not so the broad road One gets the impression that the wide road is much more accommodating, fewer restrictions. You can take all your stuff with you. You don't have to renounce anything. You can keep your sinful and self-serving ways. It's a whole lot less disruptive. But at what cost? So there are two ways, the narrow Jesus way and the wide way of the world. One will get you where you want to go to life, and the other will get you in trouble, eternal trouble. So which gate did you use? Which road are you on? And where will your road land you? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your teaching on the two ways, and for the heads up about what's ahead for travelers on these roads. We desire life, and because we desire life, we choose Jesus, his way, and his salvation. Amen. Let's take a moment to remember the Lord and to give thanks to God for his good road to redemption. the word at the beginning one with God the Lord most high your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. 
nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down Your love was greater What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, failed to be for you. Silence the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father, it's who you are. Are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 And I have seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You 
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love. Love, 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 you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. To us. Praises rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long. When we see you, we find strength to face a day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises Hosanna, Hosanna Come have your way among us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Hear the sound of hearts we turn Turn to you in your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence. All our fears are washed away They're washed away Hosanna Hosanna You are the God who saves us Worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna Come every way among us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Cause when we see you We find strength to face the day And in your presence All our fears are washed away Cause when we see you We find strength face the day 
And in your presence All our fears are washed away They're washed away Hosanna Hosanna You are the God who saves us Worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna Come have your way among us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Hosanna 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 Well, each week we try to leave you with some community questions for you to ponder and to think about. As Jesus winds down his sermon, he reminded listeners that entrance into God's kingdom is not automatic. A share in God's kingdom requires allegiance to a person, Jesus, and a path, which he explains in the Sermon on the Mount. So three questions for you to think about and to discuss with your group. First, entering Jesus' kingdom is compared to a narrow gate and a narrow road. What is it about coming to and following Jesus that seems narrow or difficult to you? Secondly, Jesus referred to other paths than the Jesus path. He referred to them as broad and well-traveled. What is it about the broad road that attracts us? And then thirdly, try to describe your decision to join Jesus on the narrow way. What was it that drew you to such a choice? I hope you find those questions helpful. Our benediction today comes from 2 Peter chapter 3. And now, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Thanks for joining us. If there's anything that we can do to be of help, we hope that you will reach out to us. See you next time.